Have you ever felt like spicing up your photography, snapping the dial out of auto to something, anything, that'll make your photography much better and much more exciting? Sure you have. I have, and I did, and you can too, with a little help from your friend here. That's me, Glennis. I know exactly how to tune up your photos and your confidence. When it's done, you'll be shocked with how easy and pain-free the learning process was. The great Zig Ziglar said, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Hmm. So then let's start with our basics. And that would be exposure. In this video, you'll meet the histogram of VIC, very important concept that will help you understand exposure better. When digital first came on the scene, uh, most pro photographers didn't run right out and buy a DSLR. I mean, the image quality was pretty gruesome and files were tiny. They weren't good for very much. But we all know how fast that changed. Back then, I loved film and I still do. But I admit there are perks to shooting digital, and one of those is, you guessed it, the histogram. So what exactly is it? Well, in simple terms, it's a picture or a map of all the tones in a photo. It goes from the darkest tones on the left side to the lightest tones on the right, and then all the other tones in between. If you have a digital camera or even apps on your cell phone camera, you have access to this little gem. Get out your manual and find out how to switch it on. Do it now. Okay, I'm waiting. Do it now. Did you do it? Okay, let's go on now. This histogram can help me explain the concept of a tone curve and how it can help with your exposure. What's the strip underneath it? See the 10 different tones all the way from very dark, uh, just a touch off black. Then it gets lighter and lighter until they're just a smidge off pure white. It's not actually step, step, step like these 10 blocks. It's a gradual flow of 256 different tones. You need a little imagination, but this might help you. The tones in a histogram look more like this but it's a bit of a strain to see the highlights. So let's go back to the all blacks. Ah, did you get the soccer call out there? Uh, yeah, the histogram. Are there any darks here? Well, there's a microscopic number. But shadows? Yes. But the mid-tones rule in this image. Look at them all. Okay, what about highlights? Yep, got them too. But we haven't lost any detail to white. No pure whites. So what do you think? Is this a good histogram? Can there be a bad histogram? Of course there are bad histograms. But like Einstein said, it's all relative. Let's take a little detour before we dive into good versus evil. Whoops, I mean bad. Good versus bad. How about I show you the histogram on my camera? Ah, a lovely red rose just for you. I want to check in with my histogram to make sure that I got all the tones. I don't want to clip, uh, that means lose, any darks or highlights. This is my live view. I'm scrolling through the different choices. First the rows, then the histogram. All right, this is excellent. All the tones are there. If I want more information than the histogram even gives me, I just have to look underneath to know exactly what my exposure was. This histogram shows the luminance map. Uh, that means brightness, not the colors. Usually, luminance is all I care about. The odd time you might want to see a colored histogram, like reds maybe for skin tones in portraits. Maybe you have the option on your camera, and if you happen to like color information, check your manual to see if it's an option. Okay, let's move on. Now for some fun. Let's slice and dice a histogram. You're looking at the whole tonal range here. Uh, darks, shadows, to mid-tones, to highlights. 
all 256 tones. So what happens if I cut out the darks? Okay, no surprises there. There's a small gap on the left side of the histogram. Shadows, midtones, and highlights minus the darks. So let's cut out the shadows now too. Great big gap now. Only midtones and highlights left standing. Straightforward, right? Okay, our last bit of surgery. Eliminate the midtones. Yeah, the histogram looks a little sparse now. Only a few highlights left. But almost always the photo that goes with this histogram would be called overexposed. So, game over now. If you understand histograms and you use them to check all your photos, it's my promise that your pictures are going to improve. It'll become so obvious to you if you bummed up your exposure. Every histogram is kind of like a fingerprint. It's unique to only one photo. You can't look at a histogram and say that it's a good histogram unless you look at it in the context of that particular photo. So, pop quiz time. Both of these histograms belong to the same photo, the same scene with an exposure adjustment. You're going to guess which one equals the better picture. Histogram one has a clipping warning. Uh, see the little triangle with an exclamation mark? I highlighted it in red. We're missing detail in the dark tones. Pure black instead of darks. There are a lot more mid-tones and shadows than histogram number two. Histogram two has a clipping warning also, but here it's in the highlights. And some highlights are pure white, so we've lost details in those. Uh, the histogram's heavy on the darks and the shadows with some mid-tones and highlights. You might want to pause the video and think about which histogram gets your vote for the best exposure for the image. Here's the image for histogram one. Ooh, not great exposure. Too light for a night shot. You expect lots of darks and shadows. And with fireworks, yeah, you get lots of highlights. The photo with histogram two looks so much better. In this case, the histogram skewed to the left, to the dark side, gets my vote. It's a good idea to look at more photos and their histograms. It'll give you a, a bit more practice seeing how the histogram relates to its image. This photo has the full spectrum of tones. Pause the video if you want and look it over. Can you imagine what the histogram will look like? Did you have a good look at it? It has a clipping warning and you can see that a few of the darks have lost detail. They're just right to the side. They don't seem to affect the photo, so I'm okay with that. For some photographers, uh, this image is too light or overexposed. But it is a trend now, and I've seen a lot of this overexposed look in fashion. Uh, there just aren't any tones in the dark range here. Now the curves all stretched out into the darks and more of the shadows. And remember Einstein? It's all relative. So whichever photo you like best, it's your choice. That's the best histogram. Ah, the blue hour. Doesn't this look like a peaceful scene? We get very few darks, not many shadows, but lots of midtones. And the highlights are all pretty much around the sun and just in the sky and the reflection. There is a clipping warning, and I would say that those blown out highlights would be in within the sun. I'd say the midtones predominate in this picture and is very restful. This is a great histogram. The spike right in the middle of the histogram is middle gray, and that's in the center of the photo, the gray in the iPad. There's some middle gray in the ribbon and tiny bits in the wood. The placemat isn't pure white. Uh, 
Uh, look at the histogram and you can see that it doesn't go over the side there. But the black in the iPad does create a clipping warning. And uh, look at the spike. Of course, that's in the, uh, all around the edges of the iPad there. And of course, there's lots of shadow and darker midtones. A black and white photo with a lot of bright sky. That sky is what you see as that huge bump in the histogram, in the highlight area. The darks and shadows and midtones are all in the buildings. Now, this is a look I love, and I like to create it in my photo editing. Uh, there are no bright highlights here. So this is an old look, a worn photo look, and it's called the antique look. I'd manipulate the histogram in Photoshop or on one, but my original would have lots of highlights. So in my photo editor, I would just shift those highlights into midtones. But you could shoot this in your camera if you wanted to. If you saw this histogram without your photo, you'd probably throw away the shot and you'd say, bad, bad histogram. Well, it just goes to show that uh, you have to judge the two together. The photo is exactly what it was meant to be here. Uh, there are a few shadows and that little bump on the left, and there are the dark shades of green at the top of the stem. The middle tones are in the gray, uh, some greens, and the yellow and gold. A lovely picture that will remind you to check your histogram with your photo that you're trying to create. A scene with black and whites is one of the most challenging scenes to shoot. If you don't check your histogram, you could easily blow this shot in one of two ways. Your darks might all be bunched up against the left side. Not enough lights getting to the sensor. That's under exposure. Give it more light. Shoot again. Check your histogram. Or the opposite. All your highlights are blocked up on the right side. Too much light. Adjust your exposure by reducing the light. Check your histogram. And there you go. In this picture, Overexposure or underexposure would be a bad thing. That's not true for every photo, but in this one, it is. Make time with your camera this week. Check your camera manual, find out how to turn your histogram on, and use it always and forever. Congratulations, you've just taken your first step away from auto mode by getting to know your histogram. Next time we'll talk about shutter speed, what it is, what it does, and what we have to think about when we choose it. Things like, am I photographing a high school soccer game or a mountain? Maybe I'm photographing my dog running along the beach. Do I want his legs to be blurred to show how fast he's going? Nope. I want all of him to be tack sharp. Is there lots of light or is it a dark, cloudy day? Make sure you come back for the entire series on exposure because the only way to shoot consistently great photos is to take control away from your camera and put it where it belongs, in your hands.